Three. All right, well, it's five after one, and uh, maybe we'll just get started, and anybody that comes in late will will be a few minutes late. But uh, I, have, I have a request that people will mute so that if their radios or whatever are on, they're not going to... Right, right. Please mute if you're not uh, talking. We'll do some Q&A here at the end, but I, uh, we're going to uh, let Frank... Um, do a little presentation before we get into that. You want to come put it on mute, Debbie? I'll mute. I'll mute you. Mute. You're all set. All right. um, so let, let me uh, give the introduction here. Um, <clears throat> Frank Forte is a freelance photographer living near Utica, New York. He specializes in in automotive architecture. Art, architecture, travel, as well as fine art, arts photography, and has been exhibited at the Garnett Art Gallery at SUNY Polytechnic Institute, the Edith Langley Barrett Fine Arts Gallery at Utica College, and most recently at the Erie Canal Museum in Syracuse. Joining him is Derek Pratt of the Erie Canal Museum. Uh, Derek holds the position of muse museum educator. Derek most re recently worked at Chittenango Landing Canal Boat Museum, where he was director of programs. He has a BA from SUNY Cortland and is pursuing a, a, a MA in museum studies at Syracuse University. So welcome to Frank and Derek. And I will turn the program over to Frank and 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 Derek uh, right now, and um, give Frank an opportunity to present, and then I'm sure we'll have a chance for discussion and interaction and question and answer. So, thanks, Frank. So uh, this current video project that you're about to see, it's about a 10 minute video with voiceover, is based on 10 large multi image museum panels framed. And uh, these pictures that appear on the panels were taken along a 190 mile stretch of the Champlain, Erie, Cayuga Seneca canals of the New York State canal system. And I've named this project an Erie Canal Odyssey, episode one, Waterford to Montezuma. An odyssey is defined as a long and eventful voyage marked by a series of notable experiences so that's really been my case uh, in putting this uh, program together. After many hours, hundreds of miles of travel and thousands of photographs, my experience has really measured up to the definition of odyssey, although my wife calls it a, a obsession, Erie Canal obsession. At any rate, a little more background on the project. In the summer of 19, 2019, I embarked on a self-commissioned, self-funded project which has become this odyssey. I began exploring and photographing various sections of the New York Canal system, mostly the Eastern region. After creating a very large body of work, I decided to produce an exhibit for the Erie Canal Museum. So I edited down from thousands of pictures down to 45 pictures, and then I composited them on 10 large uh, museum style panels. Uh, Depicted here are activities, communities, scenery found along this eastern region of the canal. I then submitted the images to the Erie Canal Way National Heritage Corridor folks in Waterford. They do a lot of promoting of the canal, the canal trails, activities in the commu uh, communities along the canal way. So uh, they composed some very engaging and description, descriptive captions which appear on the museum exhibit, but they also serve as the narration for this video. Uh, my goal really is to document eventually all 525 miles of the New York Canal system in uh, subsequent episodes of this odyssey. What you're gonna see is episode one. It's my hope that these images will inspire appreciation for the outstanding beauty, as well as the educational, cultural, recreational opportunities that exist along the 524 miles, 230 communities, 
and 3 million acres that make up the Erie Canalway National Heritage Area. So I'm happy to say that uh, this is the world premiere of the video version of my exhibit. Roll the tape. Mm. Waterways connecting the Atlantic Ocean with the Great Lakes is among the state's greatest assets. This historic and multi-dimensional waterway plays a central role in tourism, recreation, agriculture, power generation, water supply, commercial and industrial activities, transportation, and community development. More than 70% of upstate New York's population lives within 25 miles of the Erie Canal. The New York State Canal System is part of the economic and social fabric of communities from Buffalo to Albany along the Erie Canal, from Waterford to Whitehall on the Champlain Canal, from Syracuse to Oswego on the Oswego Canal, and from Seneca Falls to Geneva on the Cayuga Seneca Canal. The U.S. Congress recognizes recognized the significance of New York's canals to our nation by establishing the Erie Canalway National Heritage Corridor in 2000. The corridor spans 524 miles across the full expanse of upstate New York. It includes the Erie, Cayuga Seneca, Oswego, and Champlain Canals and their historic alignments. The corridor encompasses 4,834 square miles in 23 counties and is home to 3.2 million people. The New York State Canal System is a National Historic Landmark. This exclusive honor is reserved for properties of exceptional value in illustrating the history of the United States. Only 3% of properties on the National Register of Historic Places are designated National Historic Landmarks. When they opened in 1915, the five locks of the Waterford Flight combined to form the highest lift in the shortest distance on any canal in the world. They raise and lower boats 169 feet in just over one and a half miles, connecting the Hudson River with the Mohawk River above Cohoes Falls. Tugs, barges, and canal yeah. ships used to line up to transit the flight. Today, pleasure boats and paddle craft outnumber commercial vessels passing through the Waterford Flight. The New York State Canal System is central to an emerging world-class recreation corridor that also includes the Empire State Trail and the New York State Canalway Water Trail. No other state in the nation boasts more than 850 miles of interconnected, navigable inland waterways and 750 miles of continuous trails. Festivals, such as the Tugboat Roundup and annual paddling events, introduce thousands of people to the nation's most famous canal each year. The Champlain Canal offers a north-south route between the Atlantic Ocean and the Great Lakes. Boaters traverse up the Hudson River over the drainage divide between Fort Edward and Fort Anne, and then down to Lake Champlain and on to the St. Lawrence Seaway. Along the route, they pass through some of the most striking scenery and historic waterways in the East. From Dutch and French explorations to the Revolutionary War to its canal heydays in the 1800s, the Champlain region connects visitors with people, places, and events that fueled the nation. From 1825 to 1918, the Erie Canal was an entirely dug channel from Albany to Buffalo. Boats carrying cargo and people were pulled by mules along a towpath that ran alongside the canal. That changed dramatically with the invention of motorized vessels in the early 20th century. With mules and towpaths no longer needed, New York State enlarged its canals and moved some sections into rivers and lakes to create the New York State Barge Canal System. The structures and channels you see along the canal today exist and operate largely as they did when the system went into operation in 1918. In the Mohawk Valley, eight movable dams between Schenectady and Fort Plain are key to making the Mohawk River navigable. Dam gates are lowered into the river to form navigable pools during the summer, but are pulled out of the water in winter to clear the way for ice and debris-filled floodwaters. During the 1800s, abundant water power spurred the growth of manufacturing in Amsterdam. Mills turned out thousands of yards of floor covering every day, turning Amsterdam into the carpet city. Other factories produced brooms, paint, 
pearl buttons, and knitted underwear. The Erie Canal ran along the south side of the Mohawk River through the hamlet of Port Jackson. The canal, and later the railroads, transported raw materials to, and finished products from, Amsterdam's manufacturers. Today, the Mohawk Valley Gateway Overlook Pedestrian Bridge spans 500 feet over the Mohawk River. The bridge connects the city of Amsterdam on the north side with the community port of Jackson on the south. This unique park over the water introduces visitors to the history of the Mohawk Valley and its peoples. Residents, visitor, and summer boaters also enjoy concerts and events at Amsterdam's Riverlink Park on the north side. Located along the New York State Thruway and Erie Canal at Lock E13, the Welcome Center showcases three major transportation arteries that helped build the Empire State and expand the U.S. westward. The Erie Canal, the New York State Thruway, and the New York Central Railroad's water level route to Chicago. The Welcome Center offers interactive kiosks promoting the state's tourism industry, Taste New York local food and beverage offerings, and restrooms. The Welcome Center's extensive grounds provide outstanding views of the Mohawk River and a chance to see boats pass through an Erie Canal lock. The site also includes a Path Through History trail showcasing the rich heritage of New York State's historical past, a Walk of Fame highlighting influential individuals from the Mohawk Valley, and a canal-themed ADA-compliant playground. Canal visitors are treated to seeing all types of boats. Canoes, cruisers, historic tugs, and other working vessels, tour boats, and vacation narrow boats all navigate the waterway. One place to watch for boats is Lock 17 on the Erie Canal in Little Falls. Built in a rocky gorge, Little Falls was a canal town for almost 30 years before the Erie Canal opened. The Western Inland Lock Navigation Company built a series of locks and a canal during the 1790s to bypass the falls and rapids here. Lock E17 has the highest lift on New York's canal system, raising and lowering boats over 40 feet. The Barge Canal Terminal Freight House, built in 1914 on the west side of town, has been adapted to serve as a welcome center for boaters and trail users. The tugboat, Governor Roosevelt, and its sibling, the Governor Cleveland, were designed for canal service and launched in 1921. Built for ice breaking when the canal season was far longer than it is today, they were originally steam powered, but were converted to diesel during the 1940s. Among the most powerful tugs in the state fleet, they are still hard at work after nearly a century of service. New York's canals are an integrated system of navigable waterways that provide a vital connection between the Atlantic Ocean and the upper Great Lakes. In addition to being used by local boaters, the canals are part of the Great Loop, a 6,000-mile boating route. Each year, hundreds of Great Loopers travel through, enjoying the distinctive heritage, engineering marvels, charming towns, and scenic beauty of the historic waterway. There are also seasonal migrations by boaters who use the canals to move between summer cruising grounds in upstate New York and the Great Lakes and winter ports in the south. Today's Erie Canal crosses Oneida Lake. Its towpath-era predecessors ran south of the lake through Syracuse. The canal enters the east end of Oneida Lake at the resort community of Sylvan Beach. The open water crossing is more than 30 miles long and can get dangerously rough. Buoys and lighthouses at Verona Beach, Frenchman's Island, and Brewerton have helped guide mariners across the lake since 1916. The 92-mile Cayuga-Seneca Canal connects the Erie Canal with Cayuga and Seneca Lakes. The region is famed for its wineries and wildlife, but also includes Seneca Falls, the birthplace of the women's rights movement in 1848. The placid waters of Van Cleef Lake replaced the rapids and waterfalls that give Seneca Falls its name. The foundations of dozens of water-powered factories that once produced pumps, fire engines, machine tools, Buttons and textiles have been submerged since 1915 by the dam at Cayuga Seneca Locks 2 and 3 on the east side of town. The Stone Seneca Knitting Mill, now home to the National Women's Hall of Fame, is a rare survivor of Seneca Falls' thriving industrial past. Remnants of earlier canal eras, including the impressive Richmond Aqueduct, are visible at nearby Montezuma Heritage Park.
Thank you, Zach. Very well done. Thank you, Frank. Beautiful. Thank you. So do you want to share uh, the map of some of the locations that, that you uh, were shooting yeah. at? I can do that. Let's get it up. So after, after we show the map, well, I guess we'll um, have an opportunity to ask some questions of both, both Frank and Derek. Um, they'll be able to field questions on the technical side of the photography and sort of the project, um, that being Frank's purview. And if, uh, if you have questions about the canal or any of the, um, uh, the historical parts of the program, um, Derek would probably be best to, to handle those. So um, in a second, Frank is gonna get up a map here that shows uh, where he's done a lot of his photography do you want me to hit share screen? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Share. Is that uh, visible? Yes. You deleting it? <laughs> uh, no. Cancel. <laughs> so uh, this is a guy, a map and guide produced by the Erie Canal Way National Heritage Corridor folks. Uh, can, can we all see that enlargement? Is that coming through already? Uh, panel one is Waterford, which is on the Hudson River. It's a canal town, very historic, where the Mohawk River, Erie Canal, and Hudson River join. So that's where you see a series of five locks which raised the uh, boats from Hudson River level 170 feet above that along a, I think it's about a, a mile and a quarter distance, five locks to, they call it a flight of locks because it's like a flight of steps. The second panel is uh, on the Champlain Canal, which connects the Hudson River and Lake Champlain. Uh, number three was the movable dams there were three locks involved with one at Amsterdam, one at Cranesville, just east of Amsterdam, and then one at Tribes Hill at Skahari Crossing. Uh, number four was the beautiful uh, pedestrian bridge connecting uh, the south side and north side of Amsterdam, where it's a literal park on that bridge. Uh, just a spectacular uh, artifact, modern. Uh, improvement to that waterfront of, of uh, Amsterdam. Little Falls uh, is in Little Falls, obviously. And then those uh, four pictures of tugboats, that's about a hundred year old tugboat still in service, the Governor Roosevelt. And uh, you'll see that between Utica, Rome, and uh, Little Falls area, that, that's its beat, so to speak. Uh, and that's where the pictures were taken, Herkimer, and the near Utica. Then that very, very exotic yacht, it, the, the title of the slide was so long because that was the name of the yacht. It had to have been a, a very expensive lot, like a floating condo from what I could see. It looked sort of looked like a shark to me. It, it made a beautiful a subject for a picture. Uh, and then Sylvan Beach was panel number nine. That was right on the edge, the eastern shore of Oneida Lake. So the Erie Canal travels, uh, boats on the Erie Canal travel through the lake. They used to go right through uh, downtown Syracuse, but they moved the canal when the Barge Canal came into existence in 1917. And then uh, in your neighborhood, uh, Montezuma is where that beautiful stone uh, aqueduct, the rem remnants of the aqueduct can be seen at the, the little park in the village of Montezuma. And then that uh, beautiful uh, sunset scene, uh, Seneca Lake, I'm sorry, Cayuga Lake and uh, Seneca Falls. 
city. So that's the route, but uh, I've got more places to go, people to meet, places to photograph as I continue the Odyssey episode two. So uh, stay tuned, I guess. Are we okay with that, Zach? Any questions yeah. on the map, on the route? I'd like to say if people are interested in seeing tugboats and stuff, um, Governor Cleveland or the Governor Roosevelt, I see them a lot at Sylvan Beach. Just interesting mm -hmm. note. And uh, the tug, I don't know if it's considered a tug, but there's a beautiful boat called the Syracuse. Just a spectacular boat. That's, uh, I caught it over in uh, Mays Point, which is right in the Montezuma Preserve. The Erie Canal goes right through the Montezuma Wildlife Reserve. It's basically a swamp, but it's a canal through the swamp, which is pretty remarkable engineering. And uh, last summer, it was harbored right at uh, that lock number 25. It's just a beautiful boat. Got some nice pictures of that. Uh, so does, uh, Jerry, you had a question? Yeah, does the canal still connect to Onondaga Lake? Yes, um, you can enter through um, this little bit uh, that connects the Seneca River to Onondaga Lake and you can still get into the Inner Harbor um, in kind of downtown Syracuse on the north side, really. Um, Frank might be zooming in there, yeah. Um, yeah, as you can see, uh, it cuts there through the lake. Um, yep. Isn't that Cross Lake? Uh, it go oh, there's Cross Lake. There's Cross Lake there. That's Onondaga. Um, they've also just finished up the trail um, connecting. So the bike trail as well around Onondaga Lake. There's a really cool bridge there now. Um, I actually went out there this weekend. There are always uh, bald eagles around it. So Onondaga Lake has improved uh, significantly um, ecologically as well. Just... Does the green dotted line indicate biking and hiking trail? Um, that line, I believe, shows um, the former route of the original canal. So um, before the barge canal, that's why it goes right through Syracuse, though uh, a lot of the times um, they're using historic um, canal pieces uh, for the trail rather than the rivers and everything. I'm wondering, Frank, myself, you've got about half the, the length of the state covered um, in this section of the project. Uh, what was the time frame for, for doing these all these pictures and how long do you suppose it will take to finish up? Well, believe it or not, it, it was uh, the late summer and early fall of 2019 where I really dug deep on that. By that time, I had enough pictures to formulate the exhibit. And the sailing season was foreshortened because of COVID last year. And yet I did get out on the water. I think it started around late June, early July. Uh, and uh, I was able to get some work done last year, 2020. So it was just uh, probably uh, maybe five or six weeks of photography. I covered a lot of ground uh, looking back. I don't know how I did it, but uh, I was able to manage it. And uh, I'm not quite sure what the second episode, I was thinking of just featuring boats along the canal with some of the exotic boats or the kayaks or the beautiful canoes that people utilize and have an episode two, your canal, Odyssey episode two, uh, the boats or, or something like that. 
But I would like to explore the western section. This is a whole different topography here. And while the eastern section follows most, mostly the Mohawk Valley, Mohawk River, uh, there's no river that connects Oneida Lake to Erie. And this is all dug for the most part. It's fed by rivers and streams, but this is almost like the plains. It's, it's fairly flat and the canal has a whole different character and it goes through some wonderful uh, communities. I've been to Spencerport, Brockport, Albion, Medina, and I photographed Lockport. So I, I have this covered in photography, but uh, from Lockport to T Tonawanda and Buffalo, uh, that's gonna be on my list to explore uh, this year, definitely. There's a wonderful waterfront community, a lot of festivities, and uh, I've not seen it yet between uh, Lockport, but especially Tonawanda and Buffalo, very thriving waterfront attractions and just the whole culture of the waterfront there from what I can see in pictures. So I want to be there. I have some friends that live in the area, so we'll hang out and they'll, they'll show me around. I did enjoy many, many people along, along the canal way, the lock chiefs, people who work on the locks, they're very helpful. They would point out things that I should consider photographing. And I took them up on that. Uh, so just the human uh, element of being guided by these folks that know the canal better than I do was, was a wonderful thing. And of course, the Erie Canalway folks provided me with a lot of guidance and uh, actually encouragement. They are using my photographs and quite a bit of their publications now. And this all started uh, in the summer of 2019. Uh, prior to that, I would take some pictures along the canalway, but nothing like this deep dive. So I, I want to really document this historic uh, uh, edifice in New York State. There's nothing like it on the planet from what I'm told and I believe it and it's quite beautiful. So I want to share that beauty and encourage uh, anyone to to take a look and it's all free. There's no lines waiting to get into an attraction. There's no ticket fees. You just show up and enjoy it. And it's a beautiful place for peace and quiet if that's of interest to anyone. There's a lot of serenity along the entire canal way. Um, can I ask a question? Sure. It's, it's velocity. What about, um, I went over to Camilla's and they had a, a, a boat that went on the canal there. I don't know it was, uh, if it was the first canal, the beginning canal in Camilla, outside of Camilla's. Do you know about that section, Frank? Uh, no, that would be Derek. He, he's a, uh, I'm still I, learning. I, I've got to be a little more acquainted with Syracuse. Sure, uh, I can. Speak that, but well. Derek would be able to answer that question. Because there seemed to be there seemed to be a a, a thing that went a a, a, a a some kind of a, a lock or something. Not a lock, but some kind of a archway a, across. A, the yeah, hill. it was very different. Yeah, very different. Yeah, so that um, Camilla. The Camillus Canal Park, I think it was just recently renamed the Dave and Liz Beebe uh, Canal Park because they were the founders of the museum and have been doing an incredible job since the 70s on it. Um, that is the enlarged canal um, that you took the boat on. Um, so that's the second version of the canal. The first one was four, 40 feet wide, four feet deep. It was so successful that in the middle of the 1800s, they expanded it um, to 70 feet wide and seven feet deep. So that's what you were that's on. Right. And they have uh, the only restored uh, historic aqueduct on yeah. the whole canal. Um, you can see kind of where they are on this map. Um, we're near it. Uh, it's Camillus, just to the west of Syracuse yeah. is Camillus. Um, it's an incredible park. Um, yeah, and that aqueduct uh, was completed about a decade ago. Um, it was years and years of effort. 
still working at the moment on trying to get a lock together. Um, this is actually a great place that we're zoomed in on. Um, if you are interested in learning more about different um, kind of uh, aspects of the canal, there's Camillus with its aqueduct. Uh, Port Byron on the left of our screen, they have opened up a new museum. Uh, the Canal Society of New York runs that. Uh, it has a, a lock, the remnants of that. Um, uh, you moved. Um, in Syracuse, that's where I am right now, we have the only remaining Waylock building. So this building is where they would have assessed tolls um, on canal boats to use the canal. And in Chitmango, um, that is where at Chitnango Landing Canal Boat Museum, they are the only remaining dry dock complex. So, um, now is, your, is your museum open the, uh, in the Syracuse now? Yes. Yep. We. What are the hours? Just, I'm sorry. What are the hours? Do you have to. Make um, we're open Monday through Saturday from ten to three. And what? And what? Um, do you have to make a, a prior reservation to go into the museum? Uh, we encourage it, but at the moment we are, we're starting to allow uh, walk-in guests again, but. Thank you. Yeah. I'd also like to emphasize to you folks um, that where you are in Ithaca is still a, a thriving part of the canal system, uh, as you can kind of see in this map, uh, both Seneca and Cayuga Lake are canalized. They're hooked up by the Seneca Cayuga Canal. And uh, there's some real exciting stuff going on there. Um, over the years, a ton of canal boats sank on both lakes. And there's a project uh, being done um, in part with um, Hobart Smith College, um, Middlebury College in Vermont, the Lake Champlain Maritime Museum to map all of the sunken canal boats on the bottom of the two Finger Lakes, um, which they are returning to Seneca Lake this year uh, to kind of finish up their survey of that lake. And they'll be moving over to Cayuga Lake. Um, it's either next year or the year after that. And they've already found a, a canal boat in like diveable water in Cayuga Lake. So oh. be interested in. Tell your friends about Are they it. finding uh, artifacts in those, in and around the, the uh, wreck site? Yeah. Um, so I think they've already identified about 20 canal boats on Seneca Lake, including the first ever uh, packet boat that's ever been discovered. When we often think about the Erie Canal, we think about packet boats. Uh, they're the ones that carried passengers. Um, people like slept on them. They were kind of they actually were the inspiration for Pullman cars, um, but they stopped being used around the 1850s once railroads were more popular. Um, so that was an incredible find. Um, apparently on Cayuga Lake, they think they might know where they can find a, a boat that was powered by horses walking on treadmills uh, that moved over the lake, that sort of thing. So it's an exciting project. Um. How about utensils or uh, household artifacts, coins? Yeah, in, in, the, uh, in the living quarters of all the canal boats, they found things like um, stoves, um, yeah, plates, silverware. Um, they haven't been able to get super um, in depth because they're several hundred feet down. Um, but yeah, they're finding uh, things. They found the cargo in a lot of them. Most of them were carrying coal. Uh, that's what the Finger Lakes were most used for because there were a couple of uh, canals coming up from Pennsylvania and it's coal fields. Mm. Need a practical. Energy. Were the horses on the treadmill on the boat that was on the, uh, in the lake? Yes, it was a ferry on the lake, um, I haven't fully wrapped my head around how it worked, but yeah, they would, I guess, walk and it would turn propellers and stuff. They'd be on the boat, um, but that was just for the lake. They didn't have canal boats that operated like that or anything. 
astonishing to think about horses on a treadmill. That is amazing. Yeah. Pe Peloton. <laughs> yeah. Um, is there a place um, outside of uh, the actual museums or the canal itself where we can get a copy of this map? Um, it's from the Erie Canalway National Heritage Corridor. So I believe you should be able to find it on their website. Frank's holding up. Do the download it. If you go on the eriecanalway.com, there's enormous amount of research, resources, everything you see. This map is actually in this holdout. It's kind of a tabloid tabloid size piece. These are at no cost. They have them at the museum. Most of the travel centers will have this piece, but here's the uh, map that you see on your screen. It's uh, really got a lot of news of current events, but some of the history and, and the work of the National Heritage Kanawe people. It's a uh, it's like a uh, partner with the U.S. Park Service. So it's not a state entity, but it's connected to the Federal Park Service and the Department of the Interior. So uh, all that you see in green on this map, that's all part of that heritage area. Hmm. Uh, it's a special designation. So the whole thing is like a historic site, but it's a rambling 524 mile park basically where communities people actually live within this area so it's not really a federal park it's a heritage area and a lot of money has been put into the trail system there's also irrigation water control uh, there's I haven't I don't have the figures but quite a bit of hydro electric is produced along the canal way hydropower, especially the Oswego Canal going from Liverpool up to the uh, Lake Ontario. A lot of hydro plants along that sector. I have a question. Sorry if you answered this before, I got bumped off. Um, on the throughway, uh, somewhere between Rochester and Albany, there's a piece of the canal and I wonder at what point did they reroute the canal so that the throughway could be built? Derek? Um, what you're probably seeing are when are the two different versions of the canal. Um, Cause um, in 1918, they built the modern barge canal um, which replaced the older one, the one that we often think of with the Erie Canal, the, uh, you know, mules pulling boats. Um, so that's probably what you're seeing. Um, I would guess they never, they didn't change the route of the canal for the throughway, as far as I know. <laughs> yeah. What you might see is uh, at Fort Byron, Fort Byron rather. Ah, you, yes. can see, you can see the remains of the canal right there. Is that the on museum the... is right here. So uh, I believe this is the throughway. So that's right on the edge of the throughway. It kind of looks like it had to be changed to bypass it, but they preserved those ruins. And it's that possible that it. when they did the throughway, they avoided just bulldozing or blasting through those. Remnants. I'm sure they made allowance for that in designing yeah. the way route. Actually, the, the museum at Port Byron is very unique. It's the only place on the thruway you can access from both the thruway and outside of the thruway. And it's a complex agreement they had to had to make with the thruway authority. Um, so yeah, it is a rest stop, that that museum. Mm -hmm. But you can also visit while not on the throughway. I just wanted to mention that um, History Center Visitor Center of, of Ithaca down on the Commons now 
used to carry both the canal calendars every year and the maps of the canals. So you might call them and see if they have any now. Uh, the Erie Canal Way heritage people in Waterford usually have a good job, do a good job sending out a, a, sometimes a case of calendars and the map guides. They like to get those out. So uh, it could be that they ran out. The, the calendars fly off the shelves. I was privileged to be in, my work was in the last two years of the calendar, 20 and 21. But it's a beautiful calendar, if, if you've seen it. Full color, large size. Uh, and it's photographers from all over the state that submit. Last year, there were 400, over 400 submissions of photographic work that they poured through to end up with uh, basically 12 pictures plus another 12 thumbnails. So 24 pictures out of 400. So uh, it is a beautiful calendar, but they go quick. They, they do about 20,000 of them each year and they, they're at libraries, travel centers, historic uh, exhibits and museums. But the idea is to get out there and see these places in real time. That's just beautiful. You, you discover things. Every time, uh, every time I go out, I do not come home without some really nice picture or an experience uh, along the canal way. I would say if you ever revise that video, the video was very informative. Um, the, the narrator talked pretty fast for the amount of information that was in there. So that if you ever revise it, I would encourage you to consider having the content go a little bit slower because there's a lot to absorb I and mean, there's so much information and the beautiful pictures and all the history that she's giving and so you probably don't want to hear that given the amount of work that you put into making that happen i, but I did enlist uh the production company i don't do video editing i have all i could do to manage the sophisticated still cameras to produce the images. But I think you're right. She really zipped right along. It's 10 minutes. They could have relaxed it a little bit, but I was anxious to get it done. I thought they did a nice job visually. Yes, it's uh, still- it's Maybe very... they were thinking of attention span of this. I'm gonna offer this to some uh, history teachers in my area where my kids went to school and they can include it in their history of New York State. There's a segment of Erie Canal history incorporated yeah. there. So maybe their attention span and just tolerates 10 minutes, I don't know. But yeah. I think that it's a point well taken. It might've been a little more dreamy or compelling if it was a little slower, but uh, there's episode two, episode three. Each one will have its own theme, uh, maybe different narration, maybe even a different production company for a different look. Uh, and of course, if you were to see it at some of the museums, they usually have a pause thing where you can stop a minute. That would be nice to on, have it and as that a would loop. take care of that. You're, you're right. Or at the kiosks in the uh, Mohawk Valley Welcome Center, that's between Canada Harry, actually uh, Fonda Fultonville exit in Canada Harry. It's a rest area, but you'd never know it. It's, it's kind of hidden behind a, a clump of trees. And it doesn't look like a rest area like the ones that have Burger King and McDonald's. Those, those are not really run by the state, but they're franchised. This is owned and operated by the state. So there's, it's a little low key, but it's the cleanest, the cleanest service center you'll ever see on the throughway right there. And it has kiosks, interactive kiosks where you could really get a good look of what's available in New York State. Well, for what road is that, the rest stop? Thruway, New York State Thruway. All right. It's Thank between, uh, it's going, you can only access it going west from Albany. So you go from Albany, you'll hit Amsterdam, then uh, Fonda Fultonville, 
right after Fonda Fultonville is uh, the turnoff. And that's right, you can actually see one of the tender boats if you look uh, to the right, you'll see it's a Mohawk Valley Service Center. Thank you. Frank, you wanna say a couple words about kind of um, equipment that you use? I mean, I, I'm Myself? a photography a little bit, so I, uh, Scott. It, I use, uh, for, for most of the pictures, I used a, a Canon brand, uh, Canon, Canon 5D Mark III, which is considered a full frame uh, sensor. So the, the cameras that you would buy at Best Buy or wherever, Walmart, have a smaller sensor. But this one has a larger one, so the detail is just phenomenal. Uh, when you enlarge them. If you were to see these pictures enlarged, you could fill up like half a billboard with one picture and it'll, it'll retain sharpness. But wow. I have another camera even newer than that. It's a Nikon a D850. It's kind of the flagship Nikon camera. I'm using that. It's even more sharp. Uh, the uh, Technology behind the sensors unique, and I've gotten some very. Uh, I do some Adirondack photography too, and when I photograph a scene with trees, you can see the veins of the leaves and a large, a large print. Let's say a thirty by forty inch or a, a three by five foot print canvas print. You could, you could see the bugs almost. Uh, so. And I use a, often use a tripod. The Seneca Falls nighttime scene, I had to wait for that, that beautiful sky. I, I saw that scene during the day, but then it started to look like it might be an interesting night shot. So I hung out there till uh, late. That was a summer shot, so it was very late. But it's one of my favorite shots because there's day and night. I don't know if you noticed, but the church lights were on in the Holy Trinity Church. And uh, you could still see daylight in the picture. So there's night and day sort of in one picture and the beautiful reflections across the uh, Seneca River. I think it's the Seneca River. That's kind of an iconic scene there. I've seen a lot of pictures of it. So I, I get to see beautiful sights like that just meandering uh, throughout the canal way. So it's really been a nice artistic experience. There we go. Uh, so uh, they have a beautiful waterfront there. I, I think I'm going to have an episode where I visit some of the communities, some of the shops, maybe do a segment on food uh, along the canal way. What, what it has offered in the uh, maybe retro diners. And especially in your area, there's just so much emphasis on wine, beverage, food. Uh, I could do a whole section on just Finger Lakes. It didn't seem as though you took any pictures from actually from the boat, boat being on the boat exactly. I'm working on that. Yeah, they were all land-based. I now own a canoe where I could take it anywhere. It's a lightweight Adirondack canoe. So I can get like the Richmond Aqueduct at Montezuma. I could get the, uh, as long as I don't get swamped by the waves of other boats going by. Uh, but I have been invited to join a few boats that are coming through this year. I'm gonna take them up on that. Different perspective, seeing it from the water. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, that's on my bucket list. Okay. <laughs> that only makes sense if you're photographing the canal. Why not get into it? Literally. So uh, more to follow. This this is fairly. Uh, this is only my will be my third year doing it. I started uh, in the summer of 2019. So. Uh, a lot to see and do this year. And it will open up on time, I believe. May 15th, I think, is when 
segments of the canal will be opened. Is that what you have, Derek? Uh, I think they officially right. announced May 21st as the oh, Okay. That's updated. The entire system or? Yeah, the whole system. So. Oh, okay. So mark your calendars, start your engines. <laughs> Any final questions here for either Derek or Frank? Beautiful photography, thank you. Thank you. I hope to get to know a little bit more about uh, Ithaca. I visited Ithaca last year uh, on a uh, kind of a just, a, it was just such a beautiful day. I, I, I circumnavigated Cayuga Lake but Ithaca looks like a great place to visit. I ate at the uh, Fargo Grill in uh, Aurora. Aurora. Oh, I love that town. What beautiful buildings. Mm. The restorations there are just, and I, I love the uh, agricultural feeling of, of the entire region and Finger Lakes. It's, it's got a certain something that's absolutely wonderful. Very well kept, I, in my opinion. So yes, I will be back. Well, let me know. Maybe see some of you uh, once in a while too. Yeah, let me know next time you're in town or when you have another yeah. installment ready. And um, appreciate you both taking the time. And um, it's nice to see you all. I feel like uh, I've, I've got to rebook another visit to the, to the Erie Canal Museum now that we've had this and to follow up with, with both of you in the future. So thank you. Yes, let's yes. keep in touch. Thank you both. Thank you. thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Hope thank to you. See you in Appreciate so. that. Bye bye. Thanks, Terry. Bye. Yep. Bye. Okay. Bye. Are we good, Zach? Yeah, I think we're good. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Very good. Eric, thanks a lot. Yeah, very good. Oh, thank you. Be in touch on our projects. All right. Thanks, Zach. Adios. Bye, Jack. Bye-bye.